But people can make mistakes, but um, the usul al-fiqh will generally protect you if you use sound methodology. And this is why, one of the things about our ulama, as long as you use sound methodology, they would accept your conclusions. They might disagree with it, but if they could see your reasoning and that you followed the proper policies and procedures of the faqih, then they would have to accept it. And that's why we have adab al-ikhtilaf, which is the comportment, the courtesy of differing. We differ about things. But sometimes there are things that It's, it's just shocking that they arrived at that. And sometimes differences, not all differences should be tolerated because some differences are just unacceptable. I mean, terrorism is a good example of that where these guys have, they've made their ishtihad. Are they qualified? Most of the ulama in the Muslim world have said absolutely not. There are some, unfortunately, that seem to uh, support this stuff, which is a real problem for the common people because it confuses them. I mean, suicide bombing was supported by uh, several people, even some of the prominent scholars. I have always been against suicide bombing. I completely believe that it's prohibited. I've never had any doubts about it. The Mauritania scholars uh, have gone with prohibition, and many other scholars, the Turkish scholars, never supported it, did they? Yeah, none of the Kurdish scholars, yeah. So unfortunately, this a lot of this came out of Palestine and the struggles in Palestine. Um, and, and suicide bombing just opened up a very ugly door. Cause initially it was focused on, you know, the quote unquote enemy, you know. I mean, I don't see how kids in a school bus are enemies, you know. But anyway, uh, but now it's the Muslims are the majority of the victims of suicide bombing. So it's like, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the fault. I hold these ulama responsible who opened that door. Because they weren't thinking about ma'ala. You can't open the door of suicide. No religion, uh, all of our religious faiths prohibit suicide. If you open the door and say to people, I mean, what if I'm in despair and I want to commit suicide? There's a lot of people that have mental illness. They want to check out. There's even people I think nowadays that probably are pretty healthy that want to check out. But, but the, you know, the point is, it's like you open up that door and suddenly you know, somebody said, like, okay, I want to get out of here. And 70 virgins to boot, you know, I'm out the door, right? And, and that, that's what they think. What, a, that's incredible. Like, how could they think that, that they could open that door? And they've proven that the majority of these young people were in trauma situations. Many of them lost their parents or lost their brother, uh, due to, you know, some situation. So it's, you know, it, that's an example of just what's your delil. And the delil they always use is, you know, the Sahabi that catapulted over the, right? That's always it. He survived. <laughs> he actually put, they put pillows all over him. So he, he was just there to open the gate and let them, he survived. He didn't die. <laughs> you know, and then they say, in ghimas al adu, in ghimas al mujahid fil adu, that's the other. Ibn Taymiyyah actually wrote a text on it, which is yin ghamis, to, for the, somebody like Khalid ibn Walid and the famous situation where he got them to, a group to go. It's like a, it's like a, a, a quote unquote suicide mission. The probability of death is very high. In this country, they give you the Congressional Medal of Honor for doing this. But you're not the instrument of your death. You're going into a situation where there's a high probability you'll die or you die to save others, right? In a situation where you're all going to die. Like a grenade comes in and somebody jumps on it. He's sacrificing his life to save lives, not to take lives. It's a completely different situation. And I, I guarantee you, the Prophet said, we have 13 years in Mecca of being oppressed. What was his sunnah? He could have had, uh, you don't think Abu Dhar, if the Prophet gave him two daggers and told him go into the haram and kill all these enemies of Islam, you don't think he would have done it? I guarantee you he would have done it. But he didn't do that. He didn't assassinate anybody. 
They tried to assassinate him. You know how many assassination attempts on the Prophet in Mecca? Everybody knows the famous one. 13 attempts on his life. It's a lot, he was sent In Mecca and Medina, 13 attempts on his life. He could have had them killed. He didn't do that. But once he got power, and this is what people forget, our Prophet Sallallahu Jesus never had power. We don't know how he would have behaved if he was a ruler. We get a glimpse of it when he went into the temple and overturned all the bank, right? I mean, there's a little glimpse of that Jesus. It's not all lovey-dovey, right? I mean, that's like turning the te- tables over. So we don't know what he would have been like had he been in power. But we know he's going to judge, right, according to the Christians. That's So he's not all just, you're all welcome, come on in. I mean, the Christians believe people are going to hell, so it's not all love, right? So our Prophet Sallallahu was a, he was a, a prophet in Mecca and, and a Rasul, obviously. But when he goes to Medina, he's a prophet ruler, which is very different. Look at Moses. Didn't rule, but made harsh judgments. Dawood ruled, Suleiman ruled, right? And we saw Dawood, he rules, Suleiman rules. They had to make decisions about war and peace, going to war, fighting. They fought, Dawood fought. So this is what the Prophet Sallallahu is complete in that he did all the things. He was a father, he was a statesman, he was a prophet, um, he was a friend. Before Islam, he said, If I was taking a friend in Islam, because he was his friend before Islam, it would have been Abu Bakr. But he's my brother, because Islam removes that kind of, right? 